You've probably heard me on this show talk a lot about something called black body radiation. And it's kind of a big deal in basically all physics and especially the history of physics. Uh, But just in case, let me recap. If you have a warm object, like just me, this desk, this microphone, the sun, like a thing that's made of lots and lots of molecules and atoms, and they're all wiggling around doing all sorts of stuff, it will emit radiation. It will emit light. Now, most things do not emit visible light. You have to be really, really hot to emit visible light. So things like me and you are actually emitting infrared light. And even colder things might be emitting microwave light. And even hotter things might be emitting x-rays or gamma rays. And this is called black body radiation because of the kinds of experiments that are being done in the mid to late 1800s to study this kind of radiation. They were called black boxes, blah, blah, blah. Hence, black body radiation. A better name for it, a more useful name might be thermal radiation. The radiation given off by warm things. Now, in the late 1800s, this was a major puzzle. We didn't really understand how black body radiation, how thermal radiation was made. We understood that you have a thing and it's hot and has a lot of energy and it makes light and so the light has a lot of energy. But the connection between them didn't make any sense because the big question we had was how does the energy in the walls of the thing, how does that get divided up in the various wavelengths that could be emitted, right? Where does the energy go when, in, when it forms light? Like who decides if there's all sorts of wavelengths being produced by a a thermal object by a black body, if there's all sorts of wavelengths of light, you know, how much, how much blues and how much reds and and how much infrareds and how much ultraviolet and how much this frequency and that frequency, this wavelength and that wavelength, just how does it get divided? And at the time, the, the naive explanation that we had, or our best idea was that it's all even like, okay, you've got 10 units of energy in your walls and it's going to get turned into light and it gets divided up evenly. Okay. So one unit goes to the x-rays, one goes to the UV, one goes to the blue, one to the red, one to the infrared, you know, and all on and on. And of course this didn't work. This didn't, wasn't able to explain black body radiation because this, according to this model, if you have say a hot cup of coffee, then a little bit of the energy coming from your hot cup of coffee goes into x-rays and you should be getting blasted with a little bit of x-rays from your coffee. And that doesn't really happen. So the energy is not getting divided up equally, but then how? No one, people worked for decades, literally decades on this problem, and no one was able to explain the exact form of black body radiation until a guy named Max Planck came along. Max Planck was super curious about this problem. He was super obsessed with this problem, and he tried everything. Like, he was just running down the list, like, let's try this. Maybe it's this. No, maybe it's that. Maybe it's this explanation. And he just couldn't figure it out. He couldn't figure it out until until he added something that he wasn't entirely comfortable adding, until he added a tweak to the mathematics that he wasn't really excited about. He added a constant. He added a constant. He took a different perspective on the relationship between the energy in the walls, the hot stuff in the walls, the molecules that are vibrating and doing all sorts of things, and the emitted radiation. In his picture, in this picture that he proposed in 1900, by the way, He said, uh, in order to generate light, you have to pay. There's a cost to generating light. If you want to make low energy stuff like infrared or microwave or maybe even red, that's cheap. You can make a lot of that. That's super easy to make. But if you want to make the hard stuff like blues and ultraviolets and x-rays, that's that's going to cost you. There needs to be a minimum amount of energy put in to a wavelength in order to make light of that wavelength. 
And that minimum amount is given by a number, just a single constant that, that ties everything together. So, you know, so it's not just a fact that, okay, high energy, short wavelength stuff, blues and ultraviolets, that's going to be more expensive than the cheap dirt, cheap bargain basement infrareds and microwaves. Like how much, just, just how much does it cost to make a bit of light? How much does it cost? The cost is given by a number called Planck's constant because it's a number and it's constant. It was invented by Max Planck, so Planck's constant. He just put it in. He's like, well, I've tried every other idea. Maybe I should try this one, adding a constant. He didn't realize. He didn't realize that this would totally revolutionize all of physics. That was not his intention. That was not his goal. He was just trying to solve this really, really sticky problem of thermal radiation, black body radiation. And once he introduced the constant, the math worked. He was able to explain the results. He's able to get what he wanted. And he kind of put it away. He's like, well, I don't really understand where this comes from. I don't even know if it's physically significant. In fact, I'm feeling a little bit nauseous actually publishing this, but I'm just telling everyone like, Hey, I found an answer. I'm not too excited about it, but you know, here we go. Let's, let's keep talking. He accidentally invented quantum mechanics because Planck's constant, this fundamental unit turned out to be a very, very important number. It turned out to be a number that didn't just represent, uh, you know, the cost of producing a bit of light, it said that there is a minimum amount of light that can be produced at a given wavelength. There is a unit of light. There is a quantum of light, something that we now call the photon. And Planck's constant is a quantum number. It represents a minimum amount of stuff that you can have in the universe, a quantum of stuff, a, a singular unit. You cannot make half of a photon. You cannot make half of a bit of light. Planck's constant is preventing you from doing that. You must have one bit of light or two bits of light or five bits of light. You cannot have a fractional amount of light because Planck's constant is sitting there saying, no, this is, this is me, the constant. This is only, you can get multiples, multiples of me. You can have one of me or two of me or 5,000 of me, but you don't get fractions of me. That formed the basis of quantum mechanics. All of quantum mechanics flows from this very fundamental constant that at fundamental levels, in terms of, say, energy or action or, you know, all sorts of things, Nature is quantized. Nature is built on fundamental constants like Planck's constant. But at the time in 1900, that wasn't exactly the plan. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and of course share. You can also go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to learn how you can keep these videos going. And of course, I wrote a book. It is available in bookstores nationwide. You can go to pmsutter.com slash book. Is that even in focus? I don't even know, but I'll see you next time.